Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to Space Engineers, and uh, welcome to uh, my little contraption that I made. So I built a lift, or an elevator for those of you who are wrong. Normally in Space Engineers you'd build a lift using pistons. Um, I decided that that wasn't fun enough, so I've used rotors and hinge chains to make probably the most absurdly overcomplicated lift I have seen in this game. Now, I couldn't just stop there, of course, so I had to go and add counterweights, just as real lifts have. Uh, does it affect the functionality? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make any slight of difference at all. The rotors have plenty enough torque to lift the elevator on its own. I just wanted to add counterweights. If this seems awfully inefficient to you, uh, it is. It absolutely is. I'm not going to argue that point. Would it be easier to just use pistons? Yes, absolutely. So I'll just take you through essentially how it works. I've got my little lift car here. I've got a button to close the doors. Right, now the doors are closed. I can say go to... let's go to the top floor. This will take a minute. Almost almost literally, actually. It does take... I, think it's about, I need to time this. It's not a fast lift, this. A set of stairs would probably be quicker, but... Also a lot of clang noises. And here we are. So you'll notice now that I'm up here, all the button panels are turned off, and the same is true for the button panels outside the lift. That's because I didn't really want anybody pressing more than one button. I want this to be as idiot-proof as possible. Of course, there is no such thing as idiot-proof, only idiot-resistant. But if I can use it, there's probably a good chance you can as well. So to turn all the button panels back on, you have to close the doors. Now that sets off an event controller, which then turns on all of these buttons. So that now I think I'll go to the, the first floor. And you'll see that when the lift gets to the first floor, this door will turn on, and then it will open. Now, say that I'm on the ground floor, and I want to go up, but the lift car is on the first floor. Now, you'll notice that because the door is open, this button panel is turned off, so I can't actually call the elevator. What I can do, however, is close the door from here, That will close the door, and then turn back on this. So I can call the lift here. This is where the One Eternity Later clip comes in handy. One Eternity Later. There's a lot of funny, weird clang noises that I don't really understand. But here we go, the lift is here. And now all I have to do if I want to go up... Close the doors again. And I want to go to the top floor. I'm not a fan of these clang noises. Jesus Christ, there's more of them. I hope it's alright. I hope. I think it's alright. It's probably fine. It hasn't exploded yet. So I ended up needing nine timers and one event controller. Like I said, the event controller just senses when the door is closed and turns on all the button panels again. I've got one timer block each for the lift going up and then back down again. I've got one timer block each for receiving the lift at the top floor and the bottom floor that is triggered by this sensor here and its counterpart on the top. I've got two timers for taking the lift from the top floor to the middle floor. I've got two timers for taking the lift from the bottom floor to the middle floor. And then I've got a timer for opening the doors again when they are all turned on. So this sensor here, all it does is trigger the timer block for receiving the lift down here, which basically tells the rotors up top that they have a certain bottom limit and that's what they can go to. Same is true for the top. This sensor, all it does 
is turn this door on and set a timer for one second to then open the door. And these two timers are mirrored at the top. No sensor for in the middle uh, because I couldn't be bothered. So I just did it for a timer, timed it from the bottom floor and from the top floor, and so I have a total of four timers just for the middle floor, effectively. So that's it. I hope you kind of found this somewhat entertaining. I don't really know. Uh, I found it very much entertaining to actually build this. It was a complete waste of almost a full day of my time, but it was fun. I might put this on the workshop. I don't really know how it takes to being pasted in. Haven't tried it. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I guess. But uh, thank you for listening to me ramble, and Agoraphobic Engineering will be back next week, episode 5. I'll be finishing off the minor, and thank you very much for watching, and as always, take care. Bye-bye.